remotely advanced AV control webinar which Roger Wicks runs. Uh, this webinar is just about um, common things which you need to understand if you need, wish to control audio video equipment from Iridium mobile software. So this is our plan. We are going to di discuss AV device types, control types and devices inside Iridium, then how we send comments, then about Iridium and global cache, Iridium gate and licensing system. Here are some examples of Iridium controlled devices. TVs, DVDs, Blu-rays, sometimes they are IR controlled, sometimes serial controlled, sometimes IP controlled and Ethernet controlled. More and more we see IP controlled devices and I guess after a year or so we have everything Wi-Fi, IP or Ethernet controlled. Here is a small example where we have a central system with AV equipment installed and we control control these devices using network and some, type, some kind of central intelligence like Crestron or AMX device is inside this central thing and uh, it controls audio and video on our installation. The second type of control is when we directly use IP control without centralized system. So we directly from Iridium Mobile control IP devices. Third type is when we use various types of control for devices. IP control for some of them, infrared control for others and RS-232 for third devices. What kind of commands can we use? We can use TCP, IP, UDP, HTTP, also RS-232 and IR. Please note that these commands are usually not interchangeable. So if you know infrared control for some kind of device and it has RS-232 and IP connection, the same uh, string sequence which you use for uh, infrared or for RS-232 will not go to TCP IP and up and that way. So we have easy IP control for many devices now. Some of them which I personally used are here. So for AV receivers, Onkyo Denon, Integra Marans, or satellite receivers, something with Linux inside like Dreambox or other satellite receivers with Enigma firmware. Video players, most uh, mostly spread XBMC, Kodi, Plex, Mediator players, Dune players, and more actually. Uh, iNext, Popcorn coming. Audio players, iTunes, Squeezebox, Sonos, Trivium for KNX. Sound for multi room control. Out of TVs, uh, I personally did not control anything except of Samsung Smart TV, but it is controlled pretty nice. And Matrix, AV switchers, Kramer. It is very widely used actually. Other IP devices which are not in here are usually pretty easy to control if you find their protocol. Where do you get the protocol and comments? First, you go to Iridium JavaScript modules. They are continually updated on our website. And soon we are going to open uh, Iridium store for modules. So you can write your own module and sell there. Or you can go there and buy modules for new devices. Another way is 
vendor website. So if you would like to control some kind of media player, you go to their website and usually you can find API or control protocol in there. Also, note that there are specialized resources like remotecentral.com and others which store drivers and protocols on their forums. Also, use our Blue Editor database with a lot of incorrect comments in there based on Global Cache Cloud. What kind of driver types do we use? Uh, we use AV and Custom Systems driver, so you can, which you can use to control anything using TCP, UDP, HTTP, RS-232. If you use no scripts, you get one-way control. If you use JavaScript, you get two-way control with feedback. We also have a global cache separate driver, which gives you infrared and RS-232 control. If you do not use scripts, then you have system feedback from devices. If you use JavaScript, you have two-way RS-232 control. So, um, in few words, I will describe inside this presentation how to set up this all, and after that I will turn on my desktop and show you the actual software and how to do this. So, first thing is you set up the project device uh, driver. So, you just drag from device base the driver which you need and drop it inside project device driver. After that, you get a list of your commands which you can use. What kind of commands can you use? You can use hex, ASCII, or decimal. Hex usually divided by commas. You use no spaces. In front of every symbol, you use these symbols. And you usually use carriage return symbol after TCP IP or RS-232 commands. It looks like this. So for ASCII, you use commas, like here, and you finish it by carriage return also. For decimals and data, you use U divided by commas and no spaces, same as hexadecimal and you finish it by carriage return. For HTTP, you can use GET and POST. For GET, you insert only what goes after this, your address, and HTTP is not inserted, so only this in green is query body. For POST, you insert header and data. You can go to our wiki and see examples. You can also use macros. Any item on your screen can be edited as macro in our macros editor. So you can use many commands one by one. Usually you should divide these commands by delays. 150 or 200 milliseconds delay is usually enough. You also can send not only one command, but you can use hold cycle. When you hold your button, you can continually send commands. Like for volume up, for example, when you hold the button, volume goes up and up, not stopping. For this, you use hold time and repeat time, which you, can, which you can edit in object properties. One of the most uh, used brand for Iridium mobile software is Global Cache. You can find Global Cache at globalcache.com, of course. Uh, how do we work with Global Cache? We use not AV control systems 
driver, but we use special global cache driver, which we drag and drop to our project drivers. Then we go to global cache cloud database, find devices which we need, and drop commands on infrared outputs. I will, I will show you this later. We can also learn infrared commands using global cache equipment, or we can manually insert infrared commands found on remotecentral.com, for example. So you can paste them in uh, Iridium editor. Then you take your infrared command and drop it on item on the screen. It asks you what to select. Send it on press, on release, on hold or on move. We usually send it on press, but not all the time. Sometimes we send one command on press and second command on hold and then edit our repeat cycle. So if you um, once click it shortly, it sends one command, but if you hold it, it repeatedly sends commands one by one. Global Cache provides not only infrared, co uh, only infrared codes in their database, they support RS-232, but um, I personally do not know if they have any kind of database for RS-232. I asked once and they told me no, they don't have it, uh, but I guess there should be something maybe community-based. We can also use macros for infrareds, so we just drop not one command but many commands and after that go to macros editor and divide them by delays if you need. Also a few words about licensing before I go to desktop. So about licensing we have two types of AV licenses. The first one is called Device License Pro. You can use it for one panel, like one iPad or one PC or one Android, one panel. And you can control any amount of AV equipment from it. Another type of license is Site License Pro, which, is, which can be used only at the moment with global cache devices. So you can control any equipment, but you need to activate your license on global cache controller. Any kind of global cache controller, even the smallest one, is good. Uh, it works with any AV or global cache equipment, but this global cache controller, which has license activated on it, should be online every time you control your devices. So thank you for this presentation and we go to desktop. Um, let me switch to the beginning of this presentation. Now, after a few seconds, you should see my desktop. Yeah, I guess you can see it. So, uh, let's go first to readymobile.net website, and I will explain you uh, what can we find in here. Uh, I see you have a question.
Yes, uh, Damien, you are absolutely right. Uh, global cash is used only for license and uh, you can control absolutely anything when this license is activated. So you just license just checks if the device is online and you can control any kind of uh, smart TVs or media centers not using global cache. Okay, hope this is clear. So Iridium Mobile website, uh, please note that there is a um, product section where you can find JavaScript modules for different kinds of equipment. You can find here Sonos, iTunes, XBMC and more. You can also find graphical user interfaces in here. More about this uh, you will find on, web, uh, on webinars where graphical user interfaces and JavaScript are discussed. Also, you go to download section and you download the reading mobile. Here it is. After you do this, you get at least a reading GUI editor in here and the reading transfer. And if you don't have, you just use search like this and run it. Also, there is Iridium Utility and Iridium Gate. Iridium Util is used to get site licenses, hardware IDs for site licenses. And Iridium Gate is used if you wish to connect many devices to one control. What, what to one global cache, for example, control. Okay, uh, in support section, you can uh, search for anything in here. Quite a lot of uh, support questions and answers, and you need to use documentation in wiki in here. So pretty much everything is described in here, AV and custom systems part and global cache part. You can find demo projects here also. So everything is described with screenshots and so on. And like this. So it's quite easy to understand. Okay, so now let's uh, go to the software. This is our Iridium GUI editor. Once you run a new project, you can name it, you can select the device or select custom resolution. Is it landscape or portrait? So this is our new project. And here you can find options. So inside these options, uh, many interesting things. You can find them inside GUI editor webinar. <laughs> so I will not stop on them to not waste time. time. So this is your future desktop. And here's a list of your pages which you use. I have also some more projects open to show you later. So this is an empty project. On the right, you can open Project Device Panel, Device Panel, and Global Cache Cloud. Or you can close them. On the left, you can open Pages Overview and Gallery. Gallery has many things inside. You can go to Iridium samples, examples, um, backgrounds, for example. So you can find many backgrounds here, or you can add your own importing files or folders. You can right-click and use put image to page background. So now our interface is not so lonely. It has a background. 
You can also find buttons in here and icons. So you can use any of them. You can also find joysticks in here and levels and widgets. Some of widgets use separate pop-ups. What is page and what is pop-up? Page is your old desktop. So everything you can see is one page usually. But above page you can open pop-ups. You can add new pages. This page 2 and you can select orientation for it. Or you can add a new pop-up. And you can select size, position, and name for it. Pop-up is marked by small icon here, and page is big icon. You can open only one page at a time. But you can open many pop-ups. So let's say I want to press this button and I want to open a new, another page. Then I go to programming and I can see everything which I can program in here. I can program press, release, hold and move. And I can also edit relations which are usually responsible for feedbacks. Let's say I want to press on it and go to page 2. So I press here for editing and I see here macros editor on press event. So we can have many actions here. What I need is show page action and select page two. That's it. Up, uh, on page two, I will need a button. or any kind of uh, picture, let's say this one. At least this picture will get me back. <laughs> so I select this item and select press, show page, page one, or I can use previous page. So now, this button interacts with the interface. So I can go to emulator, I press emulator, I press on this button and nothing happens. Uh, and I can tell you why. Because once you add anything on your screen, like this item, uh, you can uh, use it as a background usually and it has hit pass through in general properties pass through means that nothing will happen once when you press it so if you change it to active touch it will start responding on page two this uh, rabbit is also pass through now we'll make it active touch and in emulator it will start working so I'm on another page and I press on rabbit and I am back. Okay, hope this simple interaction is clear for you. I will not go deep inside it uh, because um, there are special webinars about this. Uh, what we can also do is we can draw items on the screen. And these items will have different states. Uh, in here, uh, I can see states. State 1, state 2. Usually, state 1 is when something is off, and state 2 is when something is on. You can have many states, actually. You can even have uh, animation 
using states. So like this. This thing has a lot of states. So when I press it, it starts animation from first state to the last one, and when I release it, it goes back. So I will delete it. Okay. So every item on screen can be different type. It can be button type, so you press it and something happens. It can be level type, so you can you can move it like a slider and send comments uh, and values from this to this from 0 to 100, for example. It can also be multi-state button or level, which uses many states and animations. It can be a list, which is mostly used for menus. Up-down button, which adds or which gets up or down our uh, values. Also, trigger button is often used, so you send 0, 1, for example, or 0, 100 to control something, and so on. So you need to remember that any item can be these types. Okay. Also, items use feedbacks. So you can use no feedbacks or channel feedback and if your channel is on, it is in state 2. If your channel is off, it is in state 1, for example. Invert channel, which is vice versa. It can be always on. On momentary, so you press on it, you get state 2. You release it, you get state 1. Or it can blink, so it can continually change states. Okay, so I will not go deeper into it, but you should understand this. All right, uh, let's have a button which will send something into our network. Here, you can draw buttons. You can draw items, actually, not only buttons. So you can draw, you can select, uh, let's say, iOS 8 style, and you can draw Let's say this kind of button. Okay. So I have a button here. Um, I select arrow and I can drag it and place it in any place I need. So the type of it is normal button. So I want to send some kind of command somewhere. I open projects and device. And in device base, I see here drivers which are supported. These are not all drivers. You can also open other libraries, or you can edit and add your own libraries. Like you can add Z-Wave driver here, for example, and others. So, uh, I will use now the most simple driver, uh, AVN Custom Systems TCP, for example. I just take it and drag it here. Let's say I control TV. IP TV set. So, uh, I can here, uh, here I can uh, edit connection rules. So here I can set up the IP address of this TV. I can set up the port 
I can use always connected mode or connect only when sending. And I can use uh, script mode, which can be script only or direct control and script. So uh, in here I have also driver tokens. Tokens are variables uh, which are inside our driver. Is it online or not? It's status, host, IP port, and so on. So you can edit tokens, actually. Or you can take this button and drag online in here, select in value, for example, and it will show you uh, when it is 0, 1. It's, it's 0, 1. If it is online, it will be green. It, if it is offline, it will be uh, blue. Also, in states, you can write here online or offline yeah. and it will change if it is online or offline. Uh, this is actually a dummy device. I don't have a TV set with this IP address in here, but uh, this is just an example. So let's say I need comment which is something like power on sent in here. I give a name to this channel and I take this and drag here. It asks me whether it should be it should go on press, release, hold or move. And that's it. So nothing else is needed actually. So once you press it, this command will go to this IP address, this setup port, uh, and with this stream, with this data, data inside. Okay. So uh, now uh, let's. Uh, let's use some kind of global cache device. So let's say we would like to control Apple TV, this joystick. So let's see if this joystick is active touch, this. Then set up our um, global cache device. We have one global cache device. Uh, global cache has a utility called iHelp on their website which can search for available global cache devices. So I have here Wi-Fi to IR iTouch with IP address of 1259. So uh, I go here, I take global cache, oh, drag it to the right and then to the left, always do so. Uh, global cache, uh, I select device name here, Wi-Fi to IR, this is it, change, yes. So the IP address 1259, uh, I guess, yeah. The default port, and I have here I infrared output 1, 2, and 3. So I need to set up those. I need infrared output number 1 to send Apple TV infrared signals. I go to Global Cache Cloud and update Global Cache Database. So then I go to Brands and insert Apple. Apple has uh, not a lot of devices, but Apple TV is called Media Manager. So I have all incorrect comments which Apple TV supports in here. What I need is cursor down, cursor enter, 
left, right, up, and menu. Others uh, I don't need actually. So in here, I'm going to have a cursor down. Cursor enter. Oh, sorry, no enter in this joystick. Uh, let's use. This button as dummy enter. Cursor left. Cursor right. Cursor up. And another button as menu. Let's say it's going to be this kind of button. Menu. Uh, also, if I need to type something very fast, I press F2 and I go to text field of this item. I select all states and this is menu button so I will type menu. This is dummy so it can be uh, ugly. <laughs> no problem. So this is actually it. Uh, if I select this button I see uh, highlighted in green what kind of command is attached to it. Okay, so this button is uh, checks if uh, something is online. I need to remove its program. So I go to programming, I see relations and I delete it. I press delete button. And I take online driver token for global cache and put it in value. Okay, so I run emulator. I see that it is online and it now sends my commands. Uh, I cannot show it to you unfortunately, but uh, I can tell that it works. I can also send online offline signals so it can go offline, for example. Okay. So here is how we can control uh, something using infrared database. Here you can find almost anything, like uh, mediator, for example, media manager uh, called here. This usual uh, video player actually. It has two code sets for infrared signals. Uh, let's check Samsung. Samsung has many kinds of devices. TV for example and most modules use these commands. Okay. So let's say I need an interface which will give me uh, TV control. Uh, I want to have it fast, so I go to gallery. I go to metro gallery, mini remotes in here, and I find mini TV. And it gives me a pop-up, which is already a complete mini remote control. So what I have here is, uh, let's say, volume up, volume down. Uh, and if I do not use script, I do not use this level. So I just have this. So this one will be volume down, and this one will be volume up. Uh, 
also, uh, let's say I want another command to be sent when I hold it. So when I hold this volume down, I need many commands to go. So uh, what I do is I copy this volume down, rename it, call volume down hold, and select repeat. Let's say I need to send it five times, for example. Yeah? And I drag it on this button, volume, oh, sorry, this one, volume down, hold, I drag it on this button. And not on press, but on hold. Okay. Also, I can edit hold time and repeat time. And these are usually okay. So hold time is when it starts after half a second. And this one is how often will it repeat? Every 250 milliseconds. So when I hold it, it will keep getting volume down. The same about volume up. Copy, rename, select repeat counts. So that's it. Uh, also, I need a button which will look like a TV. So this button will be TV. When I press on it, it will give me a pop-up. Uh, I can also use toggle pop-up comments. Toggle pop-up means that when I press it once again, it will close the pop-up. Yeah. So I make it place it here. Go to emulator. Oh, sorry again. This will not work. This is a re recent thing actually. Before all. Items dragged from the gallery were active. <laughs> so I press here, I have a TV remote and I control TV, volume plus, minus, hold it, and it continues sending infrared signals. Okay, so now. You almost understand it all, I guess, if you understand everything which I've shown you. Um, the important thing is that, uh, of course, your graphical interface should not look like this. Uh, how it should look like? You can go to your project properties in here. And you can press wizard. In here, you can have very fast user interface, which is quite nice. So we have pre configured pages in here, main TV. Apple TV and so on. So these are just added. So in project properties, I can tell that uh, start from main page, please. Save it. and run emulator and it will start from main page. And this page has pretty much everything uh, any main page should have. It has a list of items which you can select or it can be a list of rooms. A global control parts, 
So all climates, all lights, all cameras can be here. And scenarios here. So let's say I want this pressed and TV control should go up. So I go to programming, press, toggle pop up, TV. And during a few seconds, I have an interface which runs my TV remote and it fits very nice in all the design. Okay. Also, you can use pre-configured interfaces. For example, this is the one I like mostly for baby control. This one is called NEON and it consists of scenarios part and climate control or lighting control can also come from here. Uh, mini remote to the right and you can select what you control. And if you are inside, let's say, Sonos, and you want a full remote, you press full remote, and you have it here. You can toggle full remote in here. So I guess, I guess this one is quite nice. It is not free, though, but it is quite cheap. You can buy it on the website. You can also use free ones. Okay. So uh, now let's talk a little bit about Iridium uh, scripts. So in here, you once again, you can find JS modules. We have more modules on forum, and soon we have a um, reading store where you will be able to upload modules yourself and sell it, if you wish, or buy it. So, JS modules. Uh, let's take one module as example. Squeeze box, for example. So you download it here, download Squizbox module. Squizbox is a very nice and cheap alternative to Sonos, uh, which is in some ways maybe better than Sonos. So after you open Squizbox module, you see something like this. You see frequently asked questions answered in here how to how to use it for example so this button is programmed to open the module and if you edit your own button and you have these pages inside you will have the same so to have a squeeze box you install logitech media server from logitech uh, website so you start the server, in here, the library, you set up where to get your library and take your iTunes songs or not. And it can be installed not only on PC, it can be installed on uh, NAS, for example, uh, or QNAP, or any, on any Linux device, and not only Linux. So let's say we run it, and status is OK. On any device, you can use Squiz Players. So here I run Squiz Player. I run it from this shortcut. So my PC becomes Squiz Player. I also have another Squiz Player on Linux on my network. So I run the emulator to see if it works. So 
you can notice that I did not edit anything and I did not go to script and any kind of uh, programming. So in here, I can see which players do I have in my network. If you have nothing in here, you need to go to server settings and set up IP address of your Logitech Media Server Control Panel. So you set up the IP address of your NAS where you installed your Logitech Media Server and that's it. After that, it's all automatic. So I have two zones. One zone is here. I can take albums, for example. I can select this one. Uh, I can clear the playlist. Select some albums and add them. So you can see that here. Okay. Uh, as you can see, I control not this one, not this player. I control a remote player which is on Linux and which is in a different zone. I can also save uh, my playlist or delete it or random it and so on. Uh, let's say I want to control my my player, here it is, so this is my zone, I select what I want to play. And you can see it playing. You can also have a random mix of random songs for them. At the same time, I can go to another player and select different songs there. <laughs> So, uh, if you wish to use this inside your project, so all you have to do is take your script and drop into your project and merge it. It will ask you for a new name. It's a new name. And in here, on your main page, let's say... You want to run it. Yeah. Let's say you want to use this button. So it shows page squeeze box BG and squeeze box main. Page and pop up. Background we don't need. Oh, okay, we need uh, squeeze box main. So on the main page, I go to. No, let's select any random this button. So on press it shows page squeeze box PG and shows pop up squeeze box main. Also it is nice uh, to have all pop ups uh, hidden. Uh, at the same time, but not all the time. And on Squeezebox main, in here, if you press, let's say, let's say we have this kind of button.
on my just house. Um, so we have an active touch and we have it programmed to show page main and hide all pop-ups. So now we have it here. Yeah, and we go back. So it is very easy to get a module inside your project. Okay, so use these modules. Uh, not all of them as good as a quiz module, actually, but uh, there will be more and more and better and better. Uh, also, one more thing which I wanted to tell you um, before I go to the last part, which will be some words about licensing, is that you can buy modules and buy pre-configured interfaces. Uh, for example, Moonlight, or um, you can buy V2, for example. Yeah, V2, very nice interface, and Moonlight, very nice interface either, and iOS interfaces. And uh, additionally to some of them, you can buy also scripts. scripts. So let's say uh, this is an example of Moonlight interface with a script for AV control of mediated players, players and squeeze player control with more features than in a free module. So let's say we try it and see what it looks like. So here it is. This is a Moonlight interface which can be bought from the Iridium website. It is um, uh, not by Iridium, by third party, but it is very good actually. You can select rooms here. So let's say you select living room and you can control automation here and lights and this kind of pages can be controlled and climate page like this and shutters page and so on but what we are interested in is AV control so you press down here room menu and you get menu of your room once again and you can go to movies for example and now I have a mediator player and this is a script which is already adapted inside this interface so I can select the movie, I can see the information about it, which is stored inside the player. Uh, I can play the movie, actually. So it is being played now, so a dummy movie inside there, actually. Uh, so I, I, I can jump to another time and so on. This is another view which we have we can also run remote control and go up down on menu we also have a hidden view which like this okay so uh let me uh, show you the um, licensing and transferring using this interface.
So let's say, uh, yeah, uh, I did not show you, sorry, I did not show you audio part. The audio part is also there. Yeah. Okay, living music, and you can go to music part, for example, and you can see albums with covers. Yeah, you can select it. You can uh, add next. You can play it. This is volume. You can also jump to, to another time of your music. And you can go to a radio part, which is not inside the show uh, module. And let's say you go to stuff picks and the picks. Lounging sound. Now it uh, actually takes quite time to, to download, so uh, I will not stop on it. <laughs> okay, so uh, let me. Uh, upload this interface to uh, transfer. Iridium transfer is a software which helps you to move your interface from PC to control panel. So now, you see, uh, I turned on my iPad and it's updated the recent interface. But uh, let me show it to you from the beginning. Uh, let me activate the license form. You actually, as a developer, need at least two licenses. One license you need for your PC and another license you need for something some kind of panel from which you control. So you right click on hardware ID, you copy it. Then you go to a website, to my account section, and you get, let's say, trial licenses. Yeah. It tells me we have now two trial licenses. So, I have actually many trial licenses. Um, we, here are two latest, which I just received. Let me uh, activate on a hardware ID, which I just copied. And download the license. Here it is. So, trial. Here is a trial, which I download. And I go to reading transfer licenses, right click, add, and select the license which I just downloaded. Here it is. So license is just a file. I give it uh, some kind of a name like uh, iPad March, for example. This is a 30 days trial license. And in here I can select it already. You see iPad March. So it shows you only licenses which you can use with selected device. Then you select your project.
Uh, let's find the project which we would like to upload. This is the one. And we press here. And it is now being uploaded to the device. So that's it. You activated trial license. If you have not trial but uh, commercial license, you press here. Uh, add key. And adding your uh, license which you bought. So I now have this interface on my iPad and uh, to prove it to you I will turn on some kind of music now. Yeah. Okay. So I guess you understand everything now. Uh, <clears throat> if you have questions, you can ask me. Now I will stop my desktop demonstration. Uh, please do not forget to go to a website to oh, sorry. do not forget to go to Academy uh, part on our website and go to test in there. Let me switch my desktop again. Academy. This is uh, our webinar. Oh, I don't. Unfortunately, I don't see the test in here yet. Oh. Sorry, the test will be uh, your demo project. So what you need to do is to send a demo project with any kind of devices which you control, maybe dummy devices. It should not be real, but can be actually. It is better to be real. So if you... Um, Send your demo project to this email. This is my email. Uh, then you will be uh, granted by certification uh, and free trial licenses, and discounts, and so on. So what you need to do is make a demo project to control anything from any kind of panel. Okay. So, this is it. If you have questions, please ask. If you don't, uh, then I stop the recording and finish the webinar. Uh, we are going to have an email after the webinar with the record so you can get it anytime.